your chance, folks. There's a bus leaving right away. See the most wonderful city in the world, New York. Eight million people, and for those of us who live here, it sometimes seems nearer to 80 million. The Battery, where the cannon once guarded New York Harbor. The Bronx, named after a Dutch colonial family. Queens, the fastest growing borough. Here's Riverside Drive and Grant's Tomb, a very fitting monument to a great soldier. Coney Island steps right up, the home of the hot dog. Wall Street, the financial center of the entire nation. The Hall of Fame, honoring the great men and women of yesterday. Now we pass through New York's famous Chinatown. The Bowery, which was oddly enough once Manhattan's most fashionable street. And here's a familiar sight, the Great White Way, the hub of the entertainment world. Central Park, midtown oasis offering a pleasant retreat from the city's roaring traffic. And Greenwich Village, near Washington Square, gateway to the fabulous Fifth Avenue. And now Fifth Avenue itself, with its luxurious stores. The greatest port in the entire world. Over two million commuters a day from Long Island, Westchester, Connecticut, and New Jersey. And all points north, south, east, and west, as well as from all parts of the five boroughs. Tunnels and bridges that unite Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens. Rockefeller Center with its huge theaters, restaurants, and skyscrapers. And here's the Empire State Building, 102 stories of steel and masonry, and the forest of skyscrapers towering into the clouds. So come on, folks, get your tickets for an exciting tour of the greatest city in the world. See what goes on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, did he say? Oh, that's my department. Now, before you go sightseeing along the highways and byways of little old New York, let me show you some of the things that visitors don't often see. Things that will make what you do see a lot more interesting. I suppose you're wondering who I am. Well, you just call me Ed for short. Short for Con Edison, that is. Yep, I'm any one of the 30,000 employees of the Consolidated Edison Company of New York that supplies most of the electricity gas and steam, which helps to make this town of ours the liveliest, and some say the loveliest, spot on the globe. You know, most of us take so much for granted these days that, well, we're apt to forget that a city like New York just couldn't exist without electric utility service. For one thing, there'd be no skyscrapers. How in the world would people get up there without high-speed electric elevators? How about the millions who live in outlying sections? They couldn't get to work and home again without the subways and electric trains. Everybody depends on electric communication. The radio, telephone, and telegraph. You might want to report a fire. Maybe you need a squad car right away. Believe me, you get prompt protection whenever you need it, because these automatic electric signaling devices call for help with the speed of light. Then there's our water and sewer system. They too are made efficient and reliable with these big electric powered pumps. And as for the workshops and factories, they operate to the hum of millions of electric motors. Joe's repair shop to this block-long industrial plant. For New York City, believe it or not, is the world's largest industrial center. But making electricity and getting it to you is no simple matter because it takes power to make power. Manpower, steam power, 
and horsepower, it takes huge generating plants, such as Port Morris, Long Island City, Glenwood, Sherman Creek, East River, Waterside, Hellgate, and Hudson Avenue, the biggest steam generating station in the world. All these stations feed a network of interconnected power lines which make up the consolidated Edison system. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go down and visit one of them and see how it works. Right here in any one of Consolidated Edison's power plants is the home of that modern miracle we call electricity. Here it's made for the coal hoist, the pulverizers, the boilers, turbines, and generators. Finally, you see, it passes into the distribution system that carries current to your home. Electricity in our town is produced from steam generated in enormous boilers that may be as much as 14 stories high. The fuel burned under these boilers can be coal or it can be oil, but coal is generally the most economical. This coal comes to our plants loaded on barges or ships, as much as 10,000 tons at a time so that none of it has to be carted to New York Street. Goodness knows they're congested enough already. Besides these, mountains of reserve coal, as much as a million tons at one time, can be stored here at Astoria. That's enough coal to keep the plants running for several weeks. Now when the coal arrives at the plant, it's carried to hoppers, where it's broken up to proper size. Then it's conveyed on belt up to storage bunkers. When it's needed, the coal is fed down to pulverizers. Those things are just like great big coffee mills, grinding it into a fine powder. When it's blown into the combustion chamber and mixed with air, this powdered coal produces an instant flame of terrific intensity in the boilers. The resulting steam passes at high pressure into one of these turbines, where it's forced against hundreds of steel blades that spin like an old-fashioned windmill, only about a hundred times faster. These turbine blades operate a generator attached to the turbine shaft. And here is where the electricity is actually made. Then it passes through a network of switches and transformers and on out to your home. Whatever solids are left to go up the chimney are stopped before they reach the open air. In some places, this is done by a clever device called a precipitator, in which static electricity removes the smoke particles. In other cases, elaborate washing devices are used. Here is the system operator's room. Look at all those dials. New York's ever-changing mood is reflected right up there on those dials. If you want to stand here long enough, you can watch the city's pulse beating 24 hours a day. Those men on duty there are like doctors watching a chart, only this chart tells them instantly when more power is needed in any part of the city. It's their job to see that electricity is ready in any amount required. Every dial up there registers separately the amount of current being produced at each one of Con Edison's power plants in New York City. All of these stations are linked together by thousands of miles of electric cable. Most of it's under the ground. This complex distribution system is guarded by maintenance workers who continually check the mains and the cables and make repairs. And 
Then you have the emergency crews. These fellows are on call 24 hours a day. It's their job to cope with sudden trouble anywhere in the system. Here's a wonderful device called a network protector. It automatically isolates a faulty feeder in case of trouble and permits the network to continue service to customers without interruption. As additional protection, we can exchange current with upstate companies through this tie line station at Dunwoody in Yonkers. Or through this switching station in Jamaica, we can exchange current with the Long Island lighting system. One thing is sure, electric service must be dependable. And that kind of dependability takes money and a constant eye to the future. That's why Con Edison right now is spending many millions of dollars each year to make certain that New Yorkers will have all the electricity, gas, and steam they'll need in time to come. New and more efficient turbines. Generators such as this 155-ton baby being hoisted from a lighter. Boilers as high as the plants themselves. Condensers with 11,000 tubes, each 30 feet long, through which 52,000 gallons of river water flow each minute to condense exhaust steam from the turbine. Pulverizers, bus bars and switches. More plant capacity, gas as well as electric. Strengthened tie lines. Network extension and added facilities of many kinds to keep power at work for you. Brother, it takes a big outfit to serve a great city like New York, but most of all, it takes loyal, hardworking, well-trained men and women. Here in Con Edison, we're 30,000 strong, and more than 70% of us have been on the job continuously for 15 years or more. Yes, sir, our job is service, anywhere, under the streets, on top of a pole, in your home, or at the office making out your bill. Keeping Con Edison people physically fit is just as important to our customers as the care of our turbines and generators, and a lot more important to us. So the company helps us get the best medical care and freedom from most financial worries. For instance, we have group insurance and a mighty welcome pay envelope when we're sick, pensions for old age and disability, steady work the year round, and many other benefits that help make Con Edison one of the best places to work anywhere. Peace of mind these benefits bring, and the fact we like our work, is important to you too. Because almost everything you do, everything that makes life easier and better these days, has electricity in it one way or another. And still it costs you, on the average, only a few pennies a day. Whether you're house cleaning, washing, or ironing, whether you're preparing food, preserving it, or freezing it. Whether you're trying to keep cool or get warm. Or lighting up for protection, decoration, or just plain seeing. You flick a switch day or night and the power is there at your fingertips. In the nursery. 
at the hospital, or in the great presses that print your morning newspapers. Nowadays, you can even go to the ball games at night and you don't have to slip away from the office. You can just sit there in a blood-lighted ballpark after working hours. Here she comes. Well, get going, boy. That's I know. Now watch this slide at home. Zoom, safe at home. Yep, and here's someone else safe at home sitting there in a nice, easy chair in front of a television screen. They're watching the game and getting an umpire's view of the play. And even when you're ready to turn in and put out your light and the big city stops to catch its breath for another day, the turbine in the powerhouse still hums its song. And electricity lives in the wires at your bedside, so that you can have dependable service, not only when you think of using it, but always, for your electric servants never sleep.